Hey everyone, have you ever thought you saw or heard something but then looked in that direction to find out nothing was there? Well today we're going to look at a few perceptual phenomena that can cause such an experience. Specifically we'll be looking at the Rorschach test, the Gansfeld effect, and pareidolia. You've probably heard of a Rorschach test before. It consists of a series of 10 ink blocks. It was developed in 1921 by Herman Rorschach from which it gets its name. One of the interesting things about the ink blot is that it can give rise to many different interpretations. One person might see a butterfly, whereas another might see two clowns. A study out of Germany by Taylor and colleagues suggested that the less complex fractals are within the ink blot, the greater number of images one can see within the ink blot. This makes sense intuitively. A circle can represent a face of a sign, a wheel, or a head. The more detailed an object, the more certain we are of what it is. There aren't many people seeing different things within the Mona Lisa, for example. The theory behind the Rorschach test can be described like this. When given an ambiguous stimuli, such as a blob, the mind will project a form onto it. Whatever form is described represents a part of the person's personality, cognition, response tendencies, affectivity, motivations, and or interpersonal perceptions. The person who's being tested holds a card out in front of them and describes what they see. The test administrator looks at several categories for each card, including the content or the actual objects the subject reports, such as a human, animal, or nature. The next category looks at the location of the cards. So does the subject use the whole card, the white space, or an uncommon detail, or even a common part of the card? Then there is another category labeled determinants. This includes form, color, movement, and shading. The last category is popularity, or how common the response is between test takers. After looking at these categories as well as how the subject responded dispositionally, the psychoanalyst will interpret the results. Now I'm not trained in it, so I couldn't give you a good example of what the results actually look like. As for the validity and reliability of this test, most psychologists agree both are low. The way the process of testing can go is subject to error due to the lack of standardization, and this lack of standardization can lead the psychoanalyst to unconsciously prime the subjects during test taking. Another big issue is interpretation. Some have found that if you have different psychoanalysts interpret the same subject, their interpretations differ. Lastly, in a meta-analytical study by Wood and colleagues in the Journal of Psychological Assessment, they note that the present findings contradict the view that the Rorschach is a clinically sensitive instrument for discriminating psychopaths from non-psychopaths. A related perceptual curiosity is called the Gansfeld effect. When you're in a situation that exposes you to an unstructured, uniform stimuli, your brain will start to hallucinate and possibly be in an altered state of consciousness. When I say unstructured and uniform stimuli, think of a static screen or white noise. The most common way people try to reach this state is using cut ping pong balls over their eyes with a uniform light shining into them. However, this can be done with other senses as well, such as having headphones play white noise or wearing thick gloves. Oddly enough, there have been a few studies in the field of parapsychology using the Gansfeld effect to test for psychic abilities such as telepathy. However, most of the studies use questionable methodology and the results thusly nullified. Have you ever seen a face in a car? How about a religious figure in a piece of food? Pareidolia is the common phenomenon that seems to connect the Rorschach and the Gansfeld effect. Most people use it to describe seeing faces and things that aren't faces, but the word means faulty form, meaning a misinterpretation of form. As for seeing faces, however, it's been suggested that our brains are evolutionarily primed to find human faces, notably to find emotion in human faces. This is so we can distinguish whether someone means us harm or not. Sometimes this process produces a false positive, suggesting that there is a face when there isn't. This happens with computers, too. There have been computer programs that are trained to look for specific images and have incorrectly found another image that mistakenly look like the image the programs were designed to look for. As I said earlier, pareidolia doesn't just work on the visual system. One interpretation of electric voice phenomena, or EVPs, was that of it being auditory pareidolia. The same explanation was given when hearing phrases and audio played backwards, such as in backmasking. 
So why does this happen? The strongest argument I've found on how and why we find patterns where there aren't any comes from the Gestalt and cognitive schools of psychology. There are some images that our brain automatically fixes. For example, several unclosed images reveal closed shapes. And then you also have these studies that looked at how we perceive audio information that has been replaced with a cough or other interrupting stimulus, and noted that most people still hear the full word despite part of it not actually being there. This happens because our brain doesn't do well with uncertainty and ambiguity. Both are pretty bad for our survival, so our brain attempts to fill in the gaps to the best of its ability. It fills this information out subconsciously and with little effort. It does so well protecting us from uncertainty that we actually have a list of cognitive biases that are due to being certain when we shouldn't be. Today I covered perceptual phenomena such as the Rorschach test, the Gansfeld effect, and pareidolia. If you find phenomena related to these perceptual distortions interesting, such as ghosts, shadow figures, and cliff heads, my friend over at Tie Knots is doing a relevant video over the face on Mars. Head over there and check it out. Just because you can explain something doesn't necessarily mean that it has to lose its magic or fun. Thanks for watching. Do me a favor and have a good day. Thank you.